I do try doing land-based projects, and although I find it very interesting, nothing has the same appeal as the underwater world. How the works change is so profound and so dramatic and so meaningful that I don't think I can do anything else on land that can compare. People, let's go diving! This is the largest piece I've ever done, at 60 tonnes, 18 feet high. When we put the base plate down and we started to get the first piece in position, I just thought, God, how on earth are we going to do this? And have I made an enormous error? Almost a year and a half ago, I was living in Cancun, and a Bahamian artist, Willacy Tynes, actually emailed me, and he had this idea to create a sculpture park for the charitable organization Brief. The reason why this project is happening is because when I was in school, I won my very first art competition with Bahamas Reef Environmental Foundation. We had vowed to use what I do as an artist in their conservation work and affect change in some sort of way. I ran across Jason's work and I'm like, hey, this is fantastic. Why don't we have one of these in the Bahamas, a sculpture park? I trained as a sculptor in London quite a few years back. I used to make these large-scale installations and put them in different areas, in public town centres, in forests, in cliffs. And I was really, really interested in how these figurative works change according to their space and according to the influences around them. But I kind of always felt that there was something missing. Through my diving experience, I realised a little bit about artificial reefs and, and, and how they work. If I explored the underwater realm with my art, and if I actually gave my art a practical function and something where it was actually beneficial for the planet besides its artistic value, I thought that sounded really interesting. The most inspiring moment seeing how the corals and how the sponges actually applied the paint, the finish, the patina. As a sculptor, they did all the hardest work. I just provided the base elements and they did the actual finishing. The Caribbean is set to lose 80% of its coral reefs within the next 20 years. Places like Bahamas, which the coral reef is one of their best assets, I think it's vital that the community rallies around and tries to protect them. This piece, this atlas, is all about the younger generation supporting our oceans and stopping them from collapsing. So it's this young Bahamian girl supporting the surface of the sea. This is absolutely fantastic if we can bring somebody of Jason's calibre to do this and also to have Bahamian artists involved. The piece that I designed is called Virtuoso Man. The piece is to pay homage to the role that Atlas is playing, but also to recognize the older generation that's passing on this legacy. It was a concept that I've never done before and it was using technology that was completely new to me. We were actually using a digital process to scale up the sculpture and to turn it into slices that we could all cast separately and then actually assemble them underwater. Actually transferring this digital concept into this tangible thing it was quite a step. Surprisingly enough, there was four of us that actually built that 60 ton sculpture, which, you know, when we were doing it, we were doing it layer by layer and it, I mean, I can't even describe how difficult it was. Jason was really worried because, you know, he was like, people are expecting a lot of me. At the same time, I think he was quietly confident that he could do something on such a large scale. I think it's been actually one of the most difficult projects I've ever done. The hardest part that I'm always worried about is the deployment, where there's waves, where there's changing light, changing conditions. It's very difficult. Welcome to Judgment Day. This is the culmination of uh, a year's planning and kind of four weeks of intense work. The bit that is the most stressful and the most <laughs> worrying about the whole operation is we've got to get these layers over that, that pole. 
And I looked at the crane driver and he's got to line up this tiny little hole over this column with this big concrete weight. It's definitely complicated, but it's also very, very hazardous. If any one of those divers got a limb anywhere near the slices, it could have crushed them. It was definitely very worrying. You know, you can't communicate in the same way underwater. You know, I'm on the surface, and although I can see the sort of general outline of what's happening, to tell someone quickly is very, very hard. So we really needed a strict chain of command, and we all needed to be sort of really, really aware. It was a huge relief when the first piece locked into place. I realised that it actually could be done. As we built it up, the easier it got. We started off in sort of 18 feet and slowly, you know, by the end of it, I was actually standing on the sculpture. Even though it was such a grueling task to get it done, right now we're saying it, it was worth it. And hopefully those that come along to see these amazing pieces would be saying the same thing. Everyone had worked so, so hard on this. I think it had pushed all of us to our limits of what we could take. So yeah, I think it was a huge reward at the end. I was just completely blown away. <laughs> I don't normally get emotional about this sort of thing, but it's just so beautiful. It's just everything we had hoped it would be. It was just a sort of wonderful meeting of what we try to achieve in brief. People are going to see it, and they're going to be blown away. They're going to be amazed. They're going to be like, wow, this is what life is really about. We build these wonderful building structures, and then we also build art. I always have to sort of remind myself that the piece is not ever finished. It's continuously changing and continuously evolving. It would be interesting how it looks in 10 years, 20 years time and seeing what changes occur. A lot of the man-made things are interesting, but the, the real sort of inherent beauty, the most spectacular form and shape and texture is the actual corals themselves.